Good morning, my dear friend in Christ and family. I'd like to speak to you about the purpose and power of prayer. In John 16, 24, Jesus says, Until now, you've not been bold enough to ask the Father for a single thing in my name. But now you can ask and keep on asking him. And you can be sure that you'll receive what you ask for and your joy will have no limits. The size of a church is not measured by the number of members, but by the size of their prayer meetings. Not by the bank account, but by the size of their prayer meetings. Sunday morning, everyone is in church, but the smallest meeting in church is normally the prayer meeting. And it should be the other way around. Most who come to the prayer meetings are the old people. And why is it like this? Let me explain. Nowhere in the Bible you will find a reference to a ministry of intercession. You can go look it up. There are intercess intercessors. There are people who pray. But it's not a ministry. Why do I say that? Because on Sunday the church is full. On Wednesday there's only this few old people the, which are called the intercessors. And most people then say that why they don't attend is, attend is that intercession is not my ministry. Whilst God says that everyone should pray without ceasing. It's not a ministry. So why are people afraid of prayer then? Why don't people pray? Because they do not get results. Prayer has become a depressing experience for many people. They spend hours in prayer, but nothing happens. And then they stop praying. That's in James 4 verse 3. It says, and if you ask, you won't receive it for you're asking with corrupt motives, seeking only to fulfill your own selfish desires. Let me explain. Ask someone to record your prayers or record it yourself and listen to it afterwards carefully. What is the content of your prayer? Most of the time it will only be myself and my family and our needs and that's all. But that's not what prayer is actually about. But I'll come back to that. What prayer is about. Let's go to Matthew 6 verse 5. Jesus addresses his disciples and he says, and when you pray, in other words, not, not, not if you pray. So when, that means prayer is a daily routine. It's not a choice or an option. Prayer is a command. The child of God is expected to pray. It's supposed to be a natural action. But the problem in the church is that prayer is seen as a role of a couple of intercessors. It's their ministry. Whilst it's not. Everyone ought to pray. But let's get back to the roots of prayer. Where was prayer born? Let's go back to Genesis 1.26, just after the creation. Or in the creation process. Then God said, let us make man in our image according to our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air and over the cattle, over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. Two words are important. Let them rule over the fish. Remember, when God speaks, his word becomes a law. God said, let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds, there, over the cattle, over all the earth, and over every living thing that creeps on the earth. So please say this out loud. Let them rule. This is the most powerful statement regarding prayer we can ever learn. Let them rule. Let them subdue and dominate the earth. This is the most powerful statement. God did not say, let us. Because let us mean God includes himself. But he says, let 
them is not included in that. So the only creature that has legal authority on earth is man. Man consists of a body with a spirit. See, God intended to place the spirit which came from him in flesh, and he calls it man. And to this spirit man, God has given dominion. A spirit without a body is therefore illegal on earth. I'll come back to that. Listen carefully now. Therefore, if God wants to do something on earth, God must obey His own word. The Bible says that God has placed His word above His name in Psalms 138 verse 2. It says, For you have magnified your word above all your name. So in the Hebrew context, your name is your whole being. In other words, God says He has placed His word above Himself. You will not break his word. That's why God is so faithful. He keeps his word. Not just towards you and me, but towards himself. God is holy and what is on earth is unholy. The two can never reconcile. Therefore, God cannot enter the earth without a body. Not because he's weak or not strong enough, but because he's faithful to his word. He spoke it and it became a law. Let them rule. Therefore, if anything is to be done on earth, it must be done by a body with a spirit. When Jesus came to earth and sacrificed himself for you and me, uh, uh, our sins, he did not come as a spirit. He could not. He had to become flesh to do what he had to do. Now let, let's get back to what he's praying. In this definition, you can write it down, you can memorize it, and and, and you, can, you can live by it. Pray. He's a person who gives God the license to interfere on planet Earth. Listen. Who must rule? Let them rule. So if we must rule, how can God come and rule? God gave us the authority. So if anything must happen on Earth, we must give God license. Listen, go do some Bible study and see if you can find one place in the Bible where God intervened on earth without man. You'll find it nowhere. So when God wants to do something on earth, He must use man and He uses you and me. Not because we're holy, but because there's a need, because we must rule. God needs your body. God saved you because He needed you to rule. In Matthew 28, 19, <clears throat> Jesus says, Go therefore and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Who shall do this? Who can do it? Only man. God needs you, your body. You see, we do not always understand what prayer is about. Prayer is not a question and an answer session. Now it's conversation with God regarding His will and your involvement in carrying out His will. Your involvement in His kingdom. In Genesis, in the late evenings, God walked with, with, with Adam. And they talked about what? God's will. And Adam asked questions, Lord, how do you think I should do this? And God helped Adam. He learned Adam about stuff and Adam got to know God you see prayer is conversation with God so that you and I can get to know him better and understand his will prayer is getting to know God's father heart it's intimacy In Genesis 18 God speaks to Abraham and says I've had enough of Sodom and Gomorrah I've had enough of their wickedness. I want to destroy them. But Lord, why are you talking to me? Abraham, I need a man. Abraham, I told from you from the beginning that man must rule. I need someone to give me permission to intervene. Then Abraham started to bargain. Lord, if there are 50 righteous people, please save them. And in the end, when God told Abram that there were not, not even 10 righteous people, then Abram gave in and 
and said, God, then you can destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. Please tell the person next to you, if there's no one next to you, tell it to yourself, God needs me to impact my town. God needs me to change South Africa. God needs me to intervene in this country. My dear friend, prayer is not an option. Prayer is a necessity. What this world needs is supernatural interference, interference from God. But God needs people who know His will. People who's, who's in contact with Him. People who praise with Him. People who have intimacy with Him. Therefore God's command is in 1 Thessalonians 5.17 Pray without ceasing. When Jesus raised Lazarus from the dead, he prayed and said, Thank you, my father, for hearing me. Then he called Lazarus out of his grave. The multiplication of the bread, he prayed and then broke the bread. And food scarcely enough for five people fed more than 5,000. The first church in Acts understood the concept of praying without ceasing. The church prays incessantly for Peter in prison. And God miraculously opened the prison doors and let him out. When Paul and Silas were in prison, they started praying and praising God. Then there was an earthquake and their shackles fell off and the prison doors opened. There's something you may never have understood. Matthew 16, 19, God says, And I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. And whatever you lose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Listen carefully. Whatever. Who are the rulers here? It's you and I. God gave us authority. So, God has placed us on earth to rule. He works through you and me. So when you and I exercise our dominion, even the heavens have to adhere. When you and I exercise dominion, even the heavens have to adhere. You have to understand your body is the most important element for God. This is why your spirit has to leave the earth when your body is no longer functioning. When your body is no longer functioning, your spirit is illegal. And it must leave back to God where it came from. But there's another thing. God is so committed to your body that God has designed a program. That program is called healing. He heals you today because He needs your body. Not because you have to feel better. God heals and restores you because He needs your body. The devil kills and destroys because he wants to prevent God from working in and through you. He wants to prevent you from ruling. Therefore God heals you this morning for His name's sake. This is why some people are not healed. They want to feel better and have the benefit of a healthy body for themselves. Listen, if you're sick this morning, pray, Lord, heal me because you need my body. Lord, heal me to honor and glorify your name. Lord, heal me to extend your kingdom. Lord, heal me so that I can rule. Your body is important to God. 1 Corinthians 6, 19, 20. Why is my body important let's read it or do you not know that your body is a temple of the holy spirit who is in you whom you have from god and you do not belong to yourselves for you were bought with a price then glorify god in your body and in your spirit which are god's god is spirit according to scripture and therefore god cannot go against his word to do anything on earth except through a body through a man this is why Jesus was born in a human body so that God could intervene in the sinful state of man. As a human being, he was born and as a human being, he died on the cross. Listen to me, my dear friend. God wants to use you to change the history of the world. But you need to get serious about prayer. God is limited to work on earth. When his children is not praying, when his children is not ruling, they don't know how to rule because they don't speak with God. They don't know God's will. So don't be the reason why God cannot change your city. Start to pray. Start talking to God. And start living as a ruler, as God intended.
in Genesis 1. Let us pray. Thank you, Father God, for your word. Thank you for your Holy Spirit breaking up your word to us so that we can understand it. Thank you, Father God, that you've placed rulership on our shoulders here on earth. And we thank you for this opportunity. Thank you for reminding us that we should rule. And, we, and thank you for your Holy Spirit that strengthened us to do that, giving us the power. We thank you, Father God, in Jesus' name. Amen.